Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Connors again. We're continuing our series of understanding your DNA, finding the hidden causes of disease. I'll reiterate that I don't think the DNA is everything. Your environment probably trumps this times 10. But your DNA really starts to shine when you have environmental issues and you can't seem to get over it. This tends to be like the missing link, um, the stone that's typically left un unturned. Um, a lot of doctors don't fully understand it, and I certainly don't, and learning more every day, and I try to update you with information that I learn, um, and I hope it's helpful. So that this presentation and the ones preceded it, and the ones that follow it, and the ones that I'll do until I die, are to give you tools to be able to manage your health um, by yourself, with your local doctor, with our help if we can help you. We know that um, our clinic is typically booked, and it's um, I want to help as many people as we can. So that's why we do this. All this information is free. Uh, in order for me to give you a report and a supplement report and recommendation, uh, there's a fee for that. And most of you have already paid that. That's why you're watching this and you're trying to analyze your own DNA. That's why you're watching this and help understand why I gave you the supplement report. That's why you're watching this. But if somebody sent you these videos or you just found them on YouTube or whatever, congratulations. They're free of charge. I hope they bless you. hope they help you. Um, and I uh, hope they help you under un cover some hidden things and struggles that you're having. Share them with your doctor. The more doctors that understand understand reading DNA and reading 23andMe reports and such, the better off I think everybody's going to be. So this presupposes again that you did your 23andMe if you're watching it for that purpose. Um, if you don't, go to 23andMe.com and get their their best um, um, package that they have. Um, and uh, and Send us the username and password. Follow the information on our website, cuttersclinic.com there. And uh, you're going to learn a lot. So this presentation is about the methionine cycle. Your methionine pathway is really has the purpose of making SAM. SAM or SAMe is your main methyltransferase group in your body, which controls about... Uh, uh, several hundred functions in your body. So if you don't have methyl proper methyl group support, that could be um, a, a huge issue. That you, The purpose of methyl groups is to turn on and off genes. So if you have excess gene function, then you're going to have issues. If you have decreased gene function, you're going to have issues. And they typically all begin with a hypomethylation. And they can end up becoming a hypermethylation. So you do have to be careful with supplementation. I hit that kind of hard on the last segment on the methylation piece because there tends to be some misinformation out there that if you have a specific gene defect like a MTHFR gene defect, you should instantly go and start using methyl groups like methyl tetrahydrofolate, methylcobalamin, um, I don't go that pathway. I've seen too many mistakes that pathway because if you overmethylate, you will push the biopterin pathway, which produce, can produce excess serotonin, excess dopamine, excess um, glutamates, and uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, and you could have an emotional crisis on hand. Um, so you want to look at the big picture. The farther you can move away from the subject and look at the big picture, you're going to get a better viewpoint of the whole thing. So hopefully you'll get that just through this thing and not be so myopic on, on any particular subject. All of these are important. The methionine cycle is so important. I've said in the, in the mitochondrial slides that one of your life goals and your life purposes is to make ATP. Well, another life purpose is to make SAMe. So SAMe, your main methyl transfer group, it turns genes on and, off, on and off, controls hundreds of different functions within your body. If you don't do this, you will be dead. So this is a life purpose. So stand up at the next um, 
motivation group and you can tell people your life purpose is to make ATP and to make SAMe. And um, everybody will understand what you're talking about. So if you look at the lower left-hand corner, and again, thank you, uh, Dr. Ben Lynch and Seeking Health for these nice pictures. I love their pictures. The use, if you watched the folate pathway, the, the uh, methylation video that preceded this, you'll remember this chart. You probably have it memorized already, and um, it's easy peasy. But the main purpose of folate in your body is to produce methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is gives a methyl group in order to make SAM. So it goes through the next bigger picture here. It goes through these genes, MTR, and recycles B12 through MTRR, and then goes on to make methionine at the top of that picture, then through another gene family called the MAT gene family in order to make SAM. And then that does a bunch of things, and then finally goes down to make homocysteine and feeds downwards through the CBS pathway or the transsulfuration pathway to get rid of sulfate sulfites to make glutathione. That's where SOD is involved. That's where um, uh, oxidation and reduction of different things in your body getting. This is all part of your detoxification pathway, all part of your uh, uh, metabolic pathways that create every function that goes on in your body. So we want to look a little bit specific at these as we go through these. I know it's a lot to consume if this is the first time you're looking at them. You're like, what? I am not. I hate chemistry. I don't like any of this. Well, you don't have to become a chemist or a geneticist. Just kind of follow me through this. I just want you to get kind of an idea of what we're talking about and how my brain works. So let's look at that circle at that arrow there. So from the folate pathway, methyl tetrahydrofolate enters this pathway and goes through this gene called MTR. Remember, every one of these genes are a little bubble on this beautifully um, uh, put together diagram. And that MTR is how you start to form methionine. But it goes through this little inner circle here. See where it says cobalamine and then another type of cobalamine. And it uses... Uh, uh, hydroxy groups and it makes through the MTRR gene and it makes methylcobalamine and it, it cycles around. So there's different forms of B12. This is B12. That's what cobalamine is. So there's different forms of B12. So depending upon a person's genetic defects in this cycle and even more importantly in the biopterin cycle where you make um, your uh, neurotransmitters, which we won't get to right on this presentation, it's important to use to supplement. If you're going to supplement with B12, like here's the genes that we look at, the overlapped picture here that's a, that's a cutaway from your genetic SNP report that I gave you. This MTR, this, this particular person, the MTR has no defect in their MTR gene. See, so 100% function there. Their MTRR gene, they got a double allele defect, so about 0% function. You can't equate the percent, but they have uh, the worst case scenario in their MTR gene, MTRR gene. So they don't recycle B12 very well. So the need for B12 is probably apparent with this person. We need to use B12. But then the type of B12 is the next question that we need to ask. So again, this alludes to my point of just because a person has a defect, we're going to give this supplementation. Well, you've got to look at the big picture. So because this person has a defect, it might be good to use B12, but what form of B12 should we use? We want to look at the biopterin pathway. So from this data that we have right here on this person, I don't know what form of B12 to use yet. So when I look at the biopterin pathway, then I may say, ooh, this person's got a bunch of comp defects, and we'll see that later. So because they have comp defects, we're not going to use methyl groups. We're not going to use methyl tetrahydrof or methylcobalamine in this case. So the, the main forms of B12 um, are methylcobalamine. That's what you'll see mostly used. And that's typically a good form of B12, unless the person has defects in their biopterin pathway. Then you want to switch to something else. There's uh, 
alkylcobalamin, which is another good form of B12, hydroxycobalamin, which is another good form of B12. I tend to use those two a little bit more than methylcobalamin, the person has biopterin defects. And then there's cyanocobalamin, which in my opinion is not a good form of cobalamin. So that's another way you could tell if the supplement company really cares about the people taking the supplements. Remember I said in the last presentation, are they using folic acid, synthetic folic acid in their supplements? If the answer is yes, then they really don't care. Are they using cyanocobalamin? They really don't care. So I don't let my patients take those supplements. So you shouldn't take them either. So you get a kind of a picture here. We want to look at how am I recycling B12? How am I using B12? Really important because that's what makes ultimately methionine. So there's other things that block this gene, just like every other gene. You might not have, like this person in this case scenario, did not have an MTR defect. Remember, they had a double allele MTRR defect, but they did not have an MTR defect. However, there's environmental things that even trump this. So all these things in purple at this giant, you know, uh, brownish arrow block that MTR gene, even though there's no genetic defects there. What are those things? Nitric oxide. What's that? Well, that's the, that nitric oxide could be the byproduct of a chronic infection, cytokine inducible nitric oxide. Um, so if I have chronic Lyme, I'm going to have excess uncoupled nitric oxide, which is going to block my MTR gene. Uh, TB, that's lead. So le heavy metal toxicity, lead, mercury toxicity. Here's again, hydrogen peroxide. Is it good to use hydrogen peroxide? That's natural. I'm using a hydrogen peroxide approach. I take hydrogen peroxide to kill my, um, to kill my Lyme. Huh? Well, maybe not such a good idea. It blocks your pathways here. It blocks the MTR. Uh, acetaldehyde from Lyme disease. Uh, nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is what you'd receive in the dentist's chair. Never a good idea to get nitrous oxide. Get Novocaine. Don't get nitrous oxide. That's the gas that they'd give you. TNF-alpha, that's an uh, uh, inflammatory cytokine. So if I have any source of inflammation in my body, I'm going to have a decrease um, recycling of B12. I'm going to have an increased need for B12. So in our report that we give you, you have this piece that says all B12 factors. Now, just strictly from a genetic point of view, these are B12 factors. This person did not have any MTR defect, okay? But they had a double allele MTRR gene. So they, right there, they have some need for increased B12. How do you get B12? Well, you get B12 mainly from your food, right? You get everything from your food. So you don't make B12 in your body. You recycle it, but you need a source of B12. It's an essential nutrient. So you get it, what, from red meats? Yes but you have to absorb it. How do you absorb it? It goes down to your gut. You have to break it down, so you have to have a healthy stomach acid, right? has to get into the um, uh, duodenum where you get intrinsic factor. So B12 requires this extra step other than other nutrients. Intrinsic factor that's made in your body attaches to B12 to get you to absorb B12. Well, if you have FUT2 gene defects, you're going to have gut issues, you're going to have a decreased absorption of B12. If you have GIF gene, that's a gene that makes intrinsic factor, like this person has a single allele gene, and the TCN gene, which help transport B12, uh, this person has like almost every problem you could have in getting B12 into their body. So deficiency of B12 for this person is probably pretty high. And don't be confused, because you could do a B12 test to see my B12 is just fine, but it's not getting into the cells. So you're not recycling it. You're not getting into the cells. The, the 
type of B12 is so important as well. So I know it's super confusing, but there's sometimes that I will put on somebody's supplement report that I'm going to recommend hydroxycobalamin or I'm going to recommend adenosylcobalamin. Then they're like, well, how come I'm not taking methylcobalamin because my other doctor said I should take it because I have this defect. It's like, well, I do have a reason behind everything that I'm doing. It's not just like throwing it out there. You understand, your supplement report, I am personally looking at and making decisions, and I may be wrong, okay? But um, it, it's not its not just a cookie-cutter approach. I'm making some decisions based upon information that I know. And uh, so uh, j just just know that. And it, it doesn't mean that you, what your doctor does doesn't trump me in, in their seeing you and testing you, and I understand that. But... Um, there's reasons behind what I'm trying to do, and that's what I'm trying to convey in this um, in this information in this series. Now, the other pathways that make SAM, there's multiple pathways. You see this big picture here. You can see there's multiple pathways where you're recycling things to make SAM because it's so important to make SAM. So we look at these other genes and how they are affecting my ability to make SAM. So the more defects I have through all of these different genetic pathways, I'm going to have a greater need to support this. Follow me? Now, the symptom pictures of not making SAM are not necessarily like oh, I'm going to have aches and pains or not necessarily that I'm going to you know, die of cancer right away. It's, it's a little bit more obtuse because it does so many different functions. It's um, it's 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 a broad brush base picture that we have to paint when a person is not making enough SAM. So you want to look at all these genes and support what you can support. Okay, that makes sense. MAT gene is an important one uh, that we look at with people that it can tend to push to what kind of diet we want to give because a person that has MAT gene defects is going to have excess amount of methionine. That's the that's what methionine goes through this MAT gene to make SAM. So if I have a lot of defects in MAT gene, uh, this MAT1 gene, I can have excess methionine. And that can be a problem with cancer patients. And uh, my belief is that cancers that are, um, there's certain cancers, and go back and watch my, on our website I have the cancer diet video. And on that cancer diet video I talk about People with MAT gene defects probably should cut down on the, their methionine consumption because they have a lot of excess methionine already. And with specific cancer, how it relates to that, some cancers can feed off of specific amino acids, typically methionine and uh, glutamine. So cancer patients that have a lot of MAT gene defects, and I would consider this a lot on this picture right here, I put them on a lower methionine diet. Sometimes I put them on what I call the low methionine diet, which is really basically a, a extremely low protein, similar to a vegan diet. Um, but if people does, don't have cancer and you have a gene defect like this, I would say still, maybe, maybe you should not be as big of a meat eater you know, and partly whether a person should be a, uh, uh, eat less meat or more meat depends on this gene right here, but it also depends on your biopterin pathway and how that is affecting your emotions too. And we'll talk about that in a later uh, presentation. But to, to summarize, people with a lot of MAT genes might want to consider eating less protein. Got it? People with a lot of MAT gene defects might want to consider eating less protein. Doesn't mean you cut it out altogether, but see how you do, see how you feel going on a lower protein diet. And this goes back to, I am not an advocate of everybody should be a vegan or everybody should be a vegetarian or everybody should eat paleo um, because everybody's genes are different. Okay, so you might do really well on a paleo diet. Somebody else might do really well on a vegan diet. Very different diets. So part of it, I really believe, has to do with your genes. So looking at that can help guide that. Um, there's other things that block the MAT gene. So here again, the things in purple, 
very similar to what we saw before. Chronic infections is the biggest thing. Chronic infections, toxicities can block these genes. I should say, too, that chronic stress just about blocks all your genes. So you need to lighten up a little bit and have fun at life and not take things so serious, too. But dealing with environmental factors, I've said before and again, typically trumps the genes. We really, if, if you're only going to look at your genes and hope that, you know, getting this analysis done by me is going to solve all your problems, I think we're a little off base. You have to deal with the environmental things, and hopefully you're doing that with your local doctor as well, dealing with a chronic infection or parasitic infection or dealing with a toxicity. Um, but certainly understanding your detox pathways, and these pathways could be just a blessing and be that missing link. Again, you're doing a genetic review with us, um, and I hope this is a blessing to you. That's really what our prayer is, because we can't help everybody. We just can't see everybody. If a person does want to see us, they have to go to our website under the first steps and follow all that. They can read about on our website, we put all our fees on there, too. We just want to be completely upfront. Um, so read that, and uh, you can make some decisions that are going to be best for you that way. Here's your 23andMe agreements. Um, understand I can only make the recommendations based upon you know, what we see in your genes. Make sure you bring it to your doctor and confirm it and test the supplements, whatever you need to do. That's going to be best for you. This is the kind of report you're going to get. Again, I hope this was a blessing, and um, I hope you are blessed and, um, and that um, uh, you're getting all the help you possibly can. That's, uh, that's our prayer. Bye-bye now.